Hey everybody, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. It is Monday, it is the 25th. You know what it also is? It is the week lead up, the weekday lead up into Halloween. Oh, oh, Halloween is one of my favorite holidays of the year. Isn't that right, Mr. Pumpkin? I think he agrees. So, uh, we got three stories to talk to you about today. These should be really, really fun and entertaining. Uh, beyond all of that, uh, yeah, there's giveaways going on. We have giveaways going on every single month. Just check out the link down in the description or the pinned comment for Dread Tober's giveaway. Uh, and yeah, we have some other giveaways happening a bit later this year that are going to be a bit of a bigger deal. Uh, so be subscribed because, hey, you enjoy my content, right? So if you haven't done that yet, click or tap whatever device you happen to be on that subscribe button. I would also appreciate if you would like this video and maybe even leave a comment. In fact, let me give you something to comment on. What is your main in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and why? All right, so we got three stories here. Uh, this first one apparently comes from a data miner. Uh, so I haven't been able to find the direct source on this, so I do apologize. Obviously, I'm trying to get this video out in a timely fashion. Uh, but I did hear this from Samus Hunter, who uh, is not saying that this is her information, that this is publicly available information. Uh, I've seen a couple people message me about it, but again, I haven't actually gotten the confirmation. So we're just going to work on the presumption that Samus Hunter is not lying to us about this because... Samus Hunter was trying to say, I haven't heard anything about this, but she's aware of data miner stuff. So here's the deal. Mario Party Superstars comes out this week, right? Cool. Awesome. Should be a good time. Uh, Nintendo did a warning on one of the mini games to not use your palm on the control stick because you might break the control stick or hurt your palm, uh, which is, I mean, I, I don't know why people expected that mini game to change, by the way. There was nothing wrong with it. Just because you played it back in the day in an unintended fashion, to gain an advantage doesn't mean the mini game needs to change. Just stop abusing the mechanic. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, so data miners have uncovered the, uh, two to three potentially new boards coming to the this, the uh, game. Now, these boards are not currently announced. Uh, we don't know exactly what the boards are, but apparently they're gonna be coming in the future. So this would be something like future DLC. Uh, so that's cool because people always wondered, were they going to expand the game in the future or was this just going to be it, the Superstars Collection 100 games? Was this just going to be the whole shebang? And it appears, nope, there's going to be some more boards coming. Now, I obviously have my own personal uh, favorite boards from Mario Party history that aren't in this game yet. So we'll have to wait and see if any of mine personally make that cut. But we first have to have this DLC announced or these free updates potentially announced. Uh, I don't think it's going to be announced soon. This to me sounds like something that, hey, maybe at E3 or something around that time next year, they'd be like, oh, by the way, we have new DLC coming out for Mario Party Superstars after it just crossed the 10 million sales mark or whatever milestone it gets to. So, uh, yep, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, again, data miners are usually really, really, really accurate when it comes to this stuff because they're literally just finding things that are in the game files. And you might be wondering, how the hell have data miners uh, done this? Well, because Super Mario... Oh, sorry, was it Mario Party Superstars? I always get, there's so many damn Mario Party games. Um, so Mario Party Superstars uh, has been leaked. Um, not only is it all over the internet, uh, there's legit copies, especially if you live in California, you can go on apps like OfferUp and find people selling real copies of the game. Um, I decided not to order one in because by the time I would have got it from Cali, uh, the game would pretty much be here. So I might as well just wait. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, I mean, not so much that it leaked, obviously. The, the weird thing about this game leaking is that besides these data mine discoveries, it's just boards and games we've played before, so it's not really that big a deal. So, I don't know. Anyways, let's get into our next story. All right, our next story uh, deals with an analyst who is giving a prediction on Nintendo's next-gen hardware and when we can expect it. This analyst is a name you probably have not heard in a while. We're talking about Web Bush analyst Michael Pactor. He does a show, I think it's every week, called uh, The Pactor Factor. Uh, this is kind of like a follow-up show from his old game trailer days. Uh, and yeah, he 
t t he basically answers a bunch of fan questions every single week. Uh, and he does it for free, by the way. He's not, you know, th this isn't something that he's being paid to do. Uh, he just does it because he enjoys it. Uh, and one of those questions dealt with when he would expect a next gen uh, Nintendo Switch to come out because there's obviously been rumors of next year, maybe 2023. Here's what he had to say. I think the probably the earliest you're going to see a new console is 2024 and honestly more likely 2025. So again, not because they can't, they can. It's because they're making so much money making Switches. If the Switch is still $300, it'll drop to $250. He's talking about the base model after Christmas and once supply and demand get in balance again. The OLED will become the de facto model, so the mainline model at 300. So I've purchased this before, by the way. They're going to drop the price of the old one, stop making the old one, drop the price of the OLED. That's going to be. I, I've actually made this prediction already. That part of it, anyways. Uh, but they're minting money at 300. dollars The thing costs them less than 150 dollars to make, probably less than 100 dollars. So they're able to make a ton of money as long as the, they are. What's the rush to bring out a new console? If they believed the competition was Microsoft and Sony, they would release a more powerful console. That um, This goes back to Mr. Iwata and his blue ocean strategy. That's the mantra of the company. Nintendo is absolutely convinced that they're playing on a different playground than everybody else, and they don't care how many Xboxes or Playstations are sold. And in fairness to them, if you want to play Nintendo games, you're buying a Nintendo console. As long as they have good content and a lot of it, uh, they're going to keep selling switches and one thing they've got is good content and a lot of it if you start to see a decline in sales of software you could worry but you're not their games are killing it they're just selling so many units of everything and it's because their games are really really good so i do agree with them obviously on the point that the games are really really good i get that subjective some of you guys don't actually like the switch versions of games and new ips so I, i've even heard some people say they don't like metroid dread which to me is just baffling especially I should say it's baffling to me if you previously enjoyed Metroid games. If you're a new person into the series and you tried Metroid Dread and you didn't enjoy it, that's totally different. Not every game, every genre is for every person. All right, that being said, um, I do think there is a good sentiment to say that 2023, 24, 25 feels like a next-gen Nintendo time frame, uh, but it all really depends. Obviously, if Switch is continuing to sell well, Obviously, it depends if whatever this supposed new system that's been in the works um, is supposed to be a new gen or if it's just a mid-gen upgrade. If it's a mid-gen upgrade and we're not getting a new system in 2025, a Switch Pro in 2022 makes more and more sense if we're not really getting the next gen until 2024, 2025. But we'll have to wait and see. This is all speculation at this point. Uh, but I do appreciate his viewpoints. I also think Michael Pachter is a fairly intelligent person. I know people can point out all of his wrong predictions and just fact-based inaccuracies in the past but um none of us are analysts that are handling millions of dollars of people's stock money uh so i'm just saying that like yeah maybe we're experts in other things that he is not but the field he works in he's literally one of the best to do it so that's one reason why i can respect his opinion when it comes to stuff like this because all of this affects stocks and he, nintendo is one of the stocks that he does track and suggest buy or sells in to his client. All right, this last story is maybe the uh, uh, the best story out of all this. So there's been a rumor circulating and I didn't really put much uh, stock into it until Jeff Grubb spoke up today. And yes, I know Jeff Grubb doesn't have a 100% track record either, although he has a good track record. Sometimes things change behind the scenes. Um, and honestly, I've been wondering when this was gonna happen and maybe it took Super Smash Bros. Ultimate blowing up but we're starting to see companies coming out with more and more Super Smash Bros. clones. Yeah, there was that indie one, I think Brawlhalla or something like that. But setting that one aside, we haven't really seen a lot of high-end ones until obviously Nickelodeon All-Stars or whatever came out uh, and apparently is pretty solid, pretty good. Not as good as Smash, but still, it's a passable Super Smash Bros. clone and is good enough for people who are fans of Nickelodeon. But here's the thing, uh, WB is reportedly working on their own Super Smash Bros. clone, which is very interesting when you consider all the IPs that WB controls. Um, Jeff Grubb, who said this is real, but wouldn't give any exact ideas, he did note that Netherlands is not the studio behind it. That was what the initial rumor was, Netherlands. So I'm gonna kind of disregard the original rumor because it all felt around a studio that is apparently not doing it, according to Jeff Grubb, but that the game itself does exist. 
WB owns quite a few interesting properties, or at least has some film rights to a lot of interesting properties, they probably could translate into video game IP rights if they want. So uh, this is gonna be interesting uh, because let's look at the IPs that could potentially be in a game like this. Uh, so you have Batman and basically the entire DC comics. Um, so that's a lot, a lot of characters right there. Um, the Harry Potter franchise. Uh, pretty much anything that's ever been made for Adult Swim or the Cartoon Network, because WB owns that. Um, HBO shows, you know, think about things like Game of Thrones. Hello, Queen of Dragons, having that her appear, that would be insane. Jon Snow, I mean, the list goes on and on for HBO characters you could throw in there. Um, they actually have some IP rights to certain Lego movie properties. Uh, so Lego characters in here, wouldn't that be kind of cool? Godzilla, they own Godzilla, so that's one. The Matrix, and that's coming back. Obviously, we have Rocky, Rocky Balboa. Wouldn't it be cool, a boxer type to get in there? Um, and more, Sherlock Holmes, they own the IP rights to that. Scooby-Doo, obviously Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street, I mean, Freddy Krueger. I mean, this is just really, really cool stuff uh, that could potentially appear in there. In fact, someone uh, mentioned maybe even Lord of the Rings. They don't own the full rights to it, but obviously they could maybe work something out there. Uh, get some Gandalf action in there or, or any of the main characters really get Frodo or something. I don't know. It, to me, this just all sounds awesome. Um, I'm all for there being more of these Smash Bros clones because Super Smash Bros, while it's the greatest crossover in video game history, it's also very specifically tied to video games. Uh, whereas something like this, which could involve a bunch of movie and comic and book characters, is something that would never happen with Smash Bros, at least the way Smash Bros is currently done. So this makes a lot of sense. Same with the Nickelodeon one. I was totally fine with that as well because those characters realistically were never going to be in a Smash Bros game otherwise. So to me, it makes sense for some of these side ones to exist. And by the way, having more Smash Bros like fighting games is fine. Think about how many one-on-one, -on -one, you know, side by side playing games do we have you know whether it's tekken whether it's mortal kombat uh whether it's street fighter so many of these games are basically fundamentally designed in very similar uh, fighting styles a traditional fighting game style that goes back to the arcades that we don't really have a ton of ones that are built like smash bros and it doesn't make sense because super smash bros has always been basically the most popular fighting game in terms of sales and now ultimate massive I actually think that we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg. If WB does it and is successful, the Nickelodeon one sold well. Um, before you know it, we might get flooded with games like this and maybe then it might become a little bit overbearing. But for right now, as long as it's interesting companies that own a large variety of IP, I think it makes a lot of sense. This is obviously a way to also get a Smash Bros style game with characters people might care about a lot on other platforms besides Switch. And that is obviously good for gamers in general. I, I'm not one of those people that thinks hey screw you other gamers shouldn't get to have this kind of fun no forget that console wars are dumb if someone's gonna go out there and make a smash bros like game with this, those kind of characters clearly gonna have an appeal to the playstation xbox pc audience absolutely go for it i hope they bring it to switch too like you know don't leave us out of the loop too but everyone should get to partake in a game like this so i don't know i'm pretty excited about it and that's gonna do it and i'm sure maybe you've seen my dog walking around He's kind of uh, curious. Hey, Nate, why are you recording? Pay attention to me. Yada, yada, yada. See, here he is. Look at it. You're a good boy. Oh, yeah. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? This is Link. That's right, buddy. All right, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.